Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Abby Bullard and I'm the development manager at Atlanta Contemporary. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jamie while some more folks join in and then I will throw it to her. Um, I think she's going to do a fun conversation about our process today. So Jamie Kreider is an artist working primarily in the medium of ceramics. She graduated with an art degree from the University of Georgia in 2001 and worked as a photo editor at various fashion and design magazines in New York City for 15 years before returning to Atlanta in 2016. Her ceramic sculptures are collaged from individually handcrafted and glazed porcelain tiles. Her process begins with cutting geometric and organic shapes from porcelain slabs under glazing patterns and textures, and then finishing each tile with a variety of different mid-fire glazes, including copper washes, turquoise, creamy pastels, and bold primaries. These elements are then collaged together to create the sculptures. Works are inspired by the Bauhaus art of 1920s pre-war Germany and the postmodern Memphis design movement of the 1980s. She is interested in the intersection of both of these movements, uh, have between fine art and craft that combine to make functional and non-functional design objects. She is exhibited with daily operation in Brooklyn, New York, as well as Swan Coach House Gal Gallery in Poe 88 in Atlanta. Her art has been featured in various publications, including Sight Unseen, Design Milk, Architectural Digest, and Vogue. All right, so I'll throw it back to you. Hopefully you can speak way more eloquently about yourself than I can about you. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank and you we're guys. gonna keep uh, I'm sorry, we're going to keep the conversation like fluid. So I might chime in and ask some things throughout. Um, and then if anyone has any questions, drop it in the chat. Um, and I'll try and address those as we go through today's tour. So yeah, I'm Jamie. And I, my background, as um, Abby said, was in photography. So I studied photography and worked in the photography industry for 20 years now, I think. So when I moved back to Atlanta four years ago, I wanted to try something new as far as mediums. So I joined this ceramic studio, like a, a studio with like lots of different artists, and it was super inspiring. And I worked with mostly porcelain and still do, and tried different shapes, but mostly just started with tiles. So I can show you on the ground here, um, kind of my work, it's, this is a little, this is like basically one tenth of the tiles I have that I'm working on right now, but I can kind of show you my method. I usually just like have tiles and I'm constantly moving them around. I have like this, you know, I have a piece here that I'm working on kind of moving around. I take a piece from one section and, and try it out here and, you know, do different stuff like this. I have this painted black kind of just, this is just for kind of mapping out what I think, because I like to do some, some black backgrounds and then some light backgrounds. And I kind of just move the tiles between the different areas and, and you know, try out different stuff. I have like tons of these buckets and I'm constantly like overlapping and, and doing lots of different things. So basically this is my area of raw materials. And like I said, this is just a selection I have a bunch more. Um, so I guess I can start with where I started first. So like I said, I, I use tiles and roll them out and do different glazes and different techniques. A lot of them like are sponged or a lot of them are glazed high gloss. A lot of them are matte gloss. And there's one up there that's similar. So these are from about 2016 and Kind of where I started as far as collaging. And then I, like I was telling Abby, I kind of moved from different, like different kind of styles using the same materials. So the next one I went to is this height over here. So same tiles, same raw materials, but just like a different format. So I have lots of, like I said before, Lots of different techniques, like I use tape or wax relief to create lines and shapes. And this is like different patterns, like textures, 
also textures like cut out and different glazes. Like a lot of a lot of these are well, they're all like mid fire is what I do. Some of them are glossy, some are matte. This is just me kind of experimenting, starting out with making larger format using the same materials. And it was fun to work with grout and kind of make it bigger and, and more impactful. So I started with this and then another example of that style is up here. And this one is also similar, but this is like brighter and bolder. And this is also by the window, so hopefully it like displays better. And also same like, you know, negative space showing different lines, textures. It's fun to touch and it's very tactile. It's hard to see in a studio visit like this, but um, so yeah. And so from there, I kind of, went to more like minimal colors as far as like down here. This is the piece that's much more, that's just basically the clay that I got, I changed to a new porcelain clay body and was really just inspired by the clay itself. So these are all unglazed. So I use the same kind of techniques like collaging them together but this style is more about the negative space. So I experimented with the glaze or the, uh, the textures in the background using pigmented grout to make the negative space kind of shine rather than the tiles itself. But these are different. They're like more whimsical, kind of more playful rather than the mosaic style. That's like all the tiles are next to each other. This is kind of more free style and this has been a fun, a fun experiment. I'm still making this style as well. Are you still using the same grout process for those as you do for the ones that are a little bit um, where there's more going on with the tiles? Is it, the same, is it grout or are you using something different for that? Yeah, it's still grout. I mean, this one is pigmented. You know, some of these, you know, depending like these, this first one that I showed you, since the colors and the patterns of the of the tiles themselves are so wild that usually I have a more neutral grout color, but still grout. And then this is where I came to doing, experimenting with colored grouts, pigmented. Yeah, I think and, you told me one time that you, you have someone who like can mix your grout almost like two Pantone. Is that still the yes, case? Yes, there is, there is a company in Georgia, totally forgot the name right now, but they, yeah, they mix Pantone. Colors. That's awesome. I love that aspect of it. I think it really yeah. highlights that like intentionality behind your composure as well. Right. Because the subtleties are super important. Like if it's too light or too dark, it throws everything off. And actually I can show you this. This is like an example. I put it here. Okay. This is an example of two pieces that are smaller that I use just for you know, just for trying out different techniques. This was kind of early on in the mosaic. But as you can see, really light kind of natural grout. And I did the light natural grout with that one too. And then I came back and I painted that one. So that's painted grout. And it totally changed the vibe of the piece and made it, you know, it's funny, I posted it on Instagram and I was like, what color grout do you like? And it was about 50-50. So it goes both ways, but it's nice to do some light grout, some dark grout. So that's kind of a nice experiment. Um, and then more recently, last year, I started, because I was working with that beautiful porcelain clay body, I started experimenting more with like three-dimensional shapes and just like bigger scale, kind of more fun, more bold. And these are all just Basically, I'm so used to rolling out clay in tile form and flat form and then cutting from that. And these are still, some of them are cut. You know, like this one actually is a circle cut and then I formed it and, you know, same with this. It's like a, you know, it's a tile in itself but then it's kind of formed with my hands. It was nice to just like work more like a tile. And because this is not grouted, this is just on 
painted, painted wood board. You can see all the sides and all the different, you know, you can see inside and outside and around. And so I had to use underglaze, something that you can, that you can fire and it doesn't stick to the kiln shelf. It's very forgiving and it's matte, which is kind of great. Like it's a nice flat texture. So these are all underglaze. So this is one of them. And then I did, I did four, I have three here right now. And this is like more like the nightshade one. It's a little, I don't know. I, I just did like experimented with shapes. Like I said, different, you know, had like really a lot of fun doing something other than like rolling out clay and shapes. So this has been a fun experience. And from there, I've basically, I come, I always come back to the raw materials and I, and I see them and I, every time I see them, I kind of have a different idea. So this is, this is something that I've experimented with recently. These are like placed in concrete. It's kind of back, but I don't know if you can see it. But this is like a vessel, which is the first functional piece I've ever made. So just like, don't, I don't think of art like that, but for some reason I was just inspired to, during quarantine, like, I don't know, something, changed and I was like, let's do something functional. So this is, I can grab it actually, you can see it better. So it's just, you know, raw materials that have been sitting around. I have so I have thousands of little tiles like this. And I just, and I, and I just did the concrete and then pushed it in and it's fun. It's just like a nice experiment. And same with this one, it's very similar process. So those are the most recent ones I've done. Actually, I have these over here too, which I think I talked about last time, but these are some that I did during quarantine when we weren't, we had to close the contemporary for I think a month, maybe six weeks, I'm not exactly sure. And so I was working at home and I was trying to basically do the whole thing at once. So rather than making the raw materials and then coming in here and putting it together and creating the piece, I was making the piece as one, which was somehow really stressful, <laughs> like really hard to, you know, they're so fragile when they're, before they're fired. So a few of them didn't make it over here, but this was fun because the background actually is the porcelain and then the porcelain pieces are glued onto the background. Uh, with the glaze, or I mean with the clay itself. And then I came in and underglazed and painted them later. And what else? Yes, I mean, I can show you, but if you want to see more of just like the raw materials and kind of making different patterns, like usually I come here, I started this one a little bit, but it's not necessarily finished. But I'm kind of at a place now where I'm trying to figure out if I want to do white monochromatic like really minimal like with this kind of lots of negative space black background or colored background in general or if I want to go back to doing like the more mosaic stuff that's like really tight so you only see a tiny bit of grab so this is my table for kind of experimenting like none of this is going to be glued down or anything like that this is just me moving tiles around so a lot of my work is I kind of have two processes or two like you know different moments where I come in here with the clay and make the actual tiles and then I come back and experiment with what exactly I'm going to do with the tiles so usually I don't think of it all in one it's like if they all happen at different moments and then they constantly change you know while I'm while I'm working on a piece I like something then I photograph it and then I change it completely. And, you know, it's always just, just a work in progress. So yeah, okay. if anybody's ever been in my studio, they, this is what I do 70% of the time. So. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I, I'm kind of curious, you know, you talk about like how being an editor, a photo editor and, and working in fashion and design is sort of a, foundation to your um, early career, how does that, you know, continue to play a role 
in your art making process. You know, I, the venturing into functional objects is kind of interesting. You know, you also make magnets that we sell in the shop, which by the way, um, if you're looking for some, I think we might still have some left in the shop. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah, but um, yeah, what role does that continue to play in your work? You know, is it inspiration based? Are you are you interested in exploring more um, that idea of functional objects, um, especially to, you know, with your time spent at home? I know we're all kind of like buying more like home decor than we are like fashion. Um, but right. does that play a role in, in any of this for you? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm always like with photo editing, I'm constantly looking at compositions and I'm constantly looking at colors and I'm always influenced by that. And it's kind of a similar experience where, you know, sometimes I'm on set actually like, you know, if I'm doing a still life shoot, working a photographer and a stylist, and this is what we do. This is what I've done for 20 years. Just like, you know, oh, you have to move this napkin over five, you know, one inch. And, you know, so it's always, it's kind of a similar process to what I've always done in photography, but instead of it being like actual products, it's shapes and, you know, it's, it's kind of awesome because it's things that I've made. So I'm making art with the art pieces that I've already made. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's fun to create all of the different pieces of the of the final print finished product so i'm making one here that's like kind of terrible but it's <laughs> but it's fun you know it's always it's always the process yeah it's fun to watch you kind of place things i think it's great um ashton bird in the chat said um love the mat on that black and white piece and um, the matte finish and said it, it was very illustrative and I definitely kind of got that vibe with some of your more recent stuff and um, even the sort of sculptural ones that kind of come off the page because you're molding them with your hand. Um, you know, are you in that way, are you thinking of um, like, what are you thinking about? What are you listening to um, when you're making those ones that are a little bit more um, illustrative? If you will? Um, the tactile ones, like the, yeah. the big ones, or the, the black one that we just looked at? I would say maybe I'm thinking a little bit more with the ones that are kind of um, tactile and sculptural. Like, what do you well, think about when you make those? Well, these, these shapes? Yeah. I mean, this this was when, like, this is, like, a really quiet moment when I had some space in my studio and I would close the door and it would be me and just like complete silence. And I would just be met, like, just like kind of just experiencing the moment. Can't say I was like listening to any specific music or any, you know, it was just kind of a moment where I had some peace. I mean, like there's a lot going on right now in the world. Everybody's a little stressed. So this is where I came in and just had some time and, and played, played a little bit more like with, with my hands and with, you know, different shapes and different colors and glazes and stuff like that. Jamie, when you're referencing um, the Memphis group and uh, and the ball house, like, would you ever, in the fact that you made a piece that is functional, would you ever consider the, the larger scale kind of fabricated, almost... Um, more three-dimensional sculptural forms and in like chairs or, or things like that because just thinking about you know those their design sensibility it, I mean would you ever entertain the creation of something that is that scale and scope yeah I, I, mean, I to, yeah I mean I always talk about doing like a huge mural like I'd love to do you know an outside like huge like mosaic outside which would be fun yeah as far as like something that's more that's like useful and as I don't know it's not something that I ever think of but it was kind of fun to make just like during quarantine when it seemed like everything should be useful and, and functional so that's kind of where those bases came from but yeah I mean I also do like this is this is actually an example of a study that I did first before I did the huge painted ones. 
So this is just an idea. Like I had all these beautiful tiles and I was like, let's put this. I had like a really nice piece of birch wood and just experimented. And I thought this is like so nice and minimal and kind of quiet. And I liked the way it felt, but it felt small. Like it's in itself, it's like a really nice moment and I like it. But I took it to the next level and kind of quadrupled the size and then made these, which which I really loved. And I love that like they don't have a frame. Like they're just like they feel loose, they feel like easygoing, and they feel um yeah, I don't know. I'm really happy with them. I'm happy with the fact that. I feel like with all of my raw materials that I use, all the tiles, all the shapes, and it's nice that I've done so many different kinds of final finished works with the same materials. Yeah, you're really yeah. pushing the medium. And this one, this is also another example Actually, the only example I have in here maybe of something I pre-designed like before I before I made it. So I actually cut out the slab of clay and then cut all these triangles and underglazed them, knowing exactly which color was going to go where, and then put it together afterwards. And it was already a composition before. So rather than like me just like moving around tiles and doing what I usually do, this was kind of a different approach, which was fun. Um, are you gonna continue to kind of work with like the texture of the grout and, cause like in that, that black and white piece that was like super exciting mm -hmm. to see uh, the black, the texture of it. Um, and then I noticed also in one of your quarantine pieces, you texturized like the porcelain a little bit. Um, is that something like a theme that you want to continue to kind of explore or are you more like kind of making everything um, a little bit flatter, like sleeker or um, what are you kind of thinking on that uh, subject? Well, this was kind of a fun accident sort of because I, I use the grout in the same way I've always used the grout where I glue down the tiles and then grout around it. But because you're seeing so much more of the grout, because there's so much more negative space, you actually see the texture of the grout. Like I, I and I thought that was kind of an exciting moment because the, the tiles themselves are super smooth and these are like very white, very bright porcelain. So this was kind of a nice, you know, accidental moment where because I'm not used to seeing the grout, because usually the other pieces I have are, the tiles are so close together that the grout is less prominent. So this was a moment where it, it was kind of a great, I feel like the, the texture of the grout and the smoothness of the tiles really works well together. So I enjoyed making these. We have a question from Ashton in the chat um, that referenced your blue triangular piece. Um, he said that it reminds him of Lee uh, Ufan monoprints. I think I said that right. Um, do you approach your ceramics as drawings, photos, or clay works? Um, I know you said like collage, but what are your thoughts on like how you see these? Are they? I kind of thought that too when he's, he mentioned the part earlier about be, being illustrative. Like, do you see these as drawings or do you see them more? as photos or just clay or sculpture? Yeah, I mean, this one definitely feels like a drawing. This one is also one of the few representational, I feel like, pieces that I have. Everything else is abstract, and this is, like, very, I mean, mountains. Like, I just see the mountains. I don't know what anybody else sees. Maybe it's more abstract. But to me, it felt different because it wasn't just some random geometric shapes. It felt more representational and you know, landscape, which was kind of fun for me. So yeah, I definitely saw this more as a moment of drawing. And I sketched it out beforehand. So it felt like, you know, more design, I think, design and drawing together. Yeah, definitely. I have a similar one over here. This is a similar one that was made beforehand. The so same, same situation where I cut it out of one slab and then took my knife and 
and then cut the different shapes and glaze them beforehand and then put it all together in the end. So this is a similar, I would say, yeah, this is a similar like drawing, I think, rather than abstract piece. This feels more intentional. And, you know, it's nice to have the ground line even throughout, which is something that usually doesn't happen with my work because all the tiles are different shapes and sizes. So this one is clearly, you can tell that it was intentional, which is not usually the way I work, but some of them are like that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. The idea of like working reductively from a slab as opposed to taking pre predetermined objects or sizes of scaled tiles and then like making them work together on a blank sheet, you're kind of working from a pre-existing um, image. That's kind of definitely, I think, as a printmaker, right. and isn't more of that like reductive block print type of method of working, which is really interesting. But I have a lot of small tiles that I kind of love to throw in here and there. You know, like I, I use the big tiles first to kind of make the composition, and then I have all these cute little tiles that I throw in to like, yeah, you um, know, like throwing spices yeah. in it. To spice it up. Yeah, exactly. Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jamie, for sharing your work and your process with us today. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye, guys.